Hello there! Today I will try to compare this new version of Affinity Photo version 2 with an industry standard Adobe Photoshop. Let's see what Affinity can do better, what is the strong suit for Photoshop or maybe there are some things that both software can do exactly in the similar level. All right? I will not tell you which one is better for you, I will just list some pros, some cons for each software. And I hope this will help you make your own decisions. Alright, so here I am in, you can guess, Affinity Photo version 2. Actually, that's version 2.1. And let's move to the first artboard, where I got my first little win for Affinity Photo. As you can guess, I am a little bit biased right now. I already switched to Affinity Photo, so <laughs> bear with me. Live preview is a great feature of Affinity Photo. So whatever you use, for example, let's say gradient tool. So if I try to apply a gradient, I see it live right now while still working with the tool. I don't need to keep trying, keep guessing, and that's stretch across multiple tools. I can give a live preview of the brush, of the mask. So you kind of got better understanding how the final result will will be you don't need to like keep trying like in photoshop it's really really great feature and it's stretching across multiple tools as i mentioned also brush that's super handy for the brush because you not only see the like the outline of the brush the size of it but the actual result with that specific texture brush and stuff like that so live preview is a huge win for affinity photo and here on the second artboard we have to mention PSD file. So .psd stands for Photoshop document and that's the industry standard. Many of you already got some PSD templates, maybe you got some previous file or client work or maybe your client required you to support PSDs because they produce many PSD files across the years, all right? So that's a native file for Photoshop and Photoshop will be always way 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 better in opening and editing psd files so that's a huge win for photoshop can i open psd in affinity photo you can but i cannot guarantee you that you will get like correct result some features are supported some are so 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 it's always safer to open in the native app in the photoshop so this psd format support that's definitely a huge win for photoshop for the brush tool, some people tend to say that brush tool is a little bit better in actually Affinity Photo. That's because of the first thing I mentioned of the live preview, because we can see exactly the brush texture while we are preparing to paint. But I believe they are really both brush engines are really capable and we got this extra feature live preview in Affinity Photo. But for Photoshop, there are so many extensions, so many assets already created across many years. So that's also a huge benefit for Photoshop users. So in this case, that's, we don't have any clear winner here, all right? For the brush tool. Both software will serve you very, very well for the brush tool. And the next one is the price. And here at the top, Affinity Photo. So we pay for this software once, $70 or your equivalent and then next year after that you pay zero because you already own this license for affinity photo version 2 so you don't need to pay for it again and again in case of photoshop you just subscribe for the service like for netflix so you must pay for one year and then for another year and then again and in that case this this amount will just piled up so for the price for the value the affinity photo is a king here a winner all right what's next here's the win for photoshop smart objects but mark we can do the smart objects in affinity photo you show it yourself in one of your tutorials yes we can so the trick is you can like drag and drop existing document like affinity photo file into another affinity photo file you will embed that into that and you will end up with very same smart object feature but it's not intuitive it's not built in into the software so if they can build in a little bit of let's say interface for us to use it easily that would be 
better right now smart objects are easier to use all right let's move to next artboard ipad version of the software so that was a win for affinity photo at first but right now in this very moment i believe both programs are very capable on ipad on mobile platform so now we don't have any clear winner here both programs can be used on your ipad so don't worry about that interface so in this case i believe that the winner is affinity photo the program is much newer so the interface is modern and our tools are split into several personas so we got just the tools we need for editing then we can change to liquify persona we'll change our tool set so there's develop persona for developing pictures we got different tools in that persona different tools in tone mapping and also in export persona so it's all divided into different personas so we are not overloaded with tools in this very moment and it's much newer program than photoshop photoshop need to be super careful with this let's say updates in the interface section because there are some users that use the program for like 20 years 15 years and they don't want much to change they update the software they want to see similar interface they don't want to relearn the same program they already know how to use so the photoshop is not that flexible they need to pay attention to the user base the old user base so they cannot make some crazy changes in the interface that's why it's not that modern all right, so the interface, that's the winner for Affinity this time. All right, what next? The auto selection, that's clear win for Photoshop. So Photoshop push hard for some AI enhanced tools to, so that the program itself can scan the picture, detect objects in the foreground, in the background, you can detect multiple people, you can select just one person. It's really, really great. And that was like the big downsides when when they released the Affinity Photo version 2, I was hoping we'll get some kind of like auto selection tools, some enhanced selection tools, but unfortunately nothing like that. So that's a big, huge win for Photoshop right now. You can use work much faster with some of those AI enhanced tools in Photoshop. All right, the next one, here's a draft. We don't have any clear winner here in the past. There was a Photoshop that was the winner here in the tutorials uh, section. But right now we got more and more tutorials for Affinity Photo. So I think it's much, much easier to learn the software. So in this case, I will not give a win to Photoshop anymore. It's here. Both programs, can you can learn about them using free resources on YouTube or some premium resources on different websites. So that's not a problem. Okay, what next? That's our last artboard. And as you can see, I put Photoshop on the top, but it's that a win? I'm not sure myself. So the Photoshop is quite old. Here's the version one from 1990. So that's really old software. And that's why they cannot make some crazy changes in the interface. And they kind of drag down by that. They keep adding new tools, making this more clutter. So we got way too many tools right now, I would say. And that's kind of a drag. So people like that fact because for the older years, they've been using Photoshop. They got so many templates, brushes, resources, old projects. So they got this huge library. So in that case, using old software like this is advantage. But if you're searching for something more modern, and you are totally new to it, so you don't care about these old templates and brushes, that's maybe a disadvantage in, in that respect, all right? So that's totally up to you. Is that advantage for you or disadvantage? So the Photoshop is all the software. That's what we know. Tutorials are available for both platforms, so don't worry about that. Auto selection, that's definitely in Photoshop. If you use a lot of selection, you should stick with Photoshop if you can afford it. Interface is a bit better in Affinity Photo. First, when you switch from Photoshop, it will be, it will be a hard, right? It's a new program, but after you get used to it and then try to go back to Photoshop, you will notice how the Affinity Photo interface is better, all right? iPad version available for both, so that's not a problem anymore what next smart objects way better in photoshop 
okay price here's a clear winner affinity photo is way cheaper brush tool really good in both PSD format industry standard file that's for Photoshop that's the huge win I would say it's really why Photoshop is still the king of raster editing because of this native PSD support I believe live preview that's a huge feature of affinity photo gradients brushes all of those tools are really easy to use if you got your live preview you can see the result before it's happened take a look right now i'm not using the brush but i can see kind of simulation of it hope you can see it i can see how the brush will be used here before i even click before i commit to it so that's a live preview for the brush that's really powerful feature in affinity photo version 2 all right guys I hope this video was somehow helpful for you. Feel free to comment down below what Affinity Photo feature do you like or what is maybe missing. You can warn others, you can tell others about some features you like in Photoshop that you hope they will be added to Affinity Photo in the future so you can switch or other way around. All right, so comment section is for you. I cannot cover everything, but I think we got some strong points here and I hope they will help you make your own decision if this is your first time here consider subscribing to my little youtube channel it's all about creative software i got more than 150 tutorials right now for you to watch and learn for free i hope i will see you in the next video bye